Okay, so the first question is, how was Spain born? It wasn't always Spain. Uh, in Europe, there was a habit of the, the tribes, the foreign tribes crisscrossing, uh, intermingling with the uh, inhabitants that were there. And in the Spanish case, uh, the first visitors were the Celts. And they're kind of an unknown origin, but uh, uh, still they, they influenced uh, the Spanish population, as, as you want to call it. Uh, then came the Romans. And you know, Rome existed roughly from 200 BC till about uh, 450. 450. That's when Rome uh, fell the Roman Empire, about 450. So it had about 500 years to exert <clears throat> an influence on, on Spain, and it did. It did, because even today we see the remains of Roman uh, adventures in Spain. The roads, Spain built the roads, uh, organized, gave, uh, gave the land the law that they still, some of them still use today. Can you guess who the next group was that came into the Iberia, it's called, the Iberian Con uh, Peninsula? Uh -oh. No, not yet. Not yet. You're, you're hot. <laughs> you're hot. The Visigoths. The Visigoths, another big, uh, a big tribe, roughly from 450 to 730. And uh, they, were, uh, they were a mixed group. A lot of these were conglomerations, uh, tribes that were running around trying to find a place that they'd like to settle in. Uh, but they all left their imprints on the land, which was not yet Spain. That didn't come till centuries uh, later. Then we have the Muslims. And can you guess how many years they ruled in Spain? Amazing, amazing. 732, 730 to 1492, 700 years of Muslim rule on the Iberian colony. It's no wonder they, uh, they had an influence on the land. No wonder we still see the mosques there that was built by the, uh, by the Muslims. Let's see what they did there. When they came in, by the way, they called it Andalusia. They didn't call it Spain. They called it Andalusia. Uh, at the time, there were millions of Christians, but only 40 to 50,000 Muslims. Uh, they treated uh, the population fairly, but made certain requirements, uh, raised the taxes <clears throat> so that they'd know that they were um, semi-welcome, semi-welcome, you must say. Uh, Cordova was the capital. Did you get to Cordova? Cordova, yes. Yeah, nice town. Very, very pretty. Yeah, a lot of nice buildings, huh? Cordova. Yeah, Cordova is the capital. <clears throat> And of course, their capital was in uh, Damascus. The Muslim caliphate was in uh, Damascus, pretty far away. Uh, they introduced, by the way, figs and almonds and uh, paper that the Chinese had already invented, but they introduced it into Spain. This is all the work of the Muslims. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Christians adopted their dress and their language. See how they were mixing. And Europe is just a, a history of hodgepodge melting pot. It's a wonder that, that, the, that the nations were able to form with all these diverse groups that met uh, in there. Uh, this is where we get the story of El Cid. I remember they made a movie of that. I think it was Charles Heston, was it? No. Uh, Rodrigo Diaz was the uh, man that they called El Cid. So the Muslims occupied until, uh, as we said, 1492. By the way, what is 1492? Does that ring a bell in your ear? Columbus sailed the blue. <laughs> and what there? I said Columbus sailed the blue. Right. 
So bo both Please things stop. happened at the same time, 1492. The uh, Muslims were expelled finally in 1492. Granada was the last stronghold on the southern tip of Spain. So they pushed them out of there and they had to go back to Africa uh, uh, as they were called the Moors, the Muslim uh, Africans. Uh, all, all, was it all that uh, everybody who left, uh, like a revolution, was. Will you say that again, please? The people who were in, like the Muslims that were there, was, yeah. was there a rebellion against the Muslims to get them out, or? Uh, yes, that's that's a very good question. I guess you wrote that because uh, they were fought against. There were four kingdoms in Spain: uh, Navarre and uh, Granada and uh, Castile and Aragon. Mm -hmm. And they had formed strong military posts mm -hmm. and they gradually drove them, uh, <clears throat> as we say, until only Granada was left on the coast and they finally pushed them off. The Muslims tried to get into Europe in 700, but this guy named Alaric stopped them. But had they won, they would have progressed right into the whole of Europe and not just Spain. Uh, but think of the uh, glory that the Muslims had at one time. It's, it's amazing. Here they rule from 730 to 1492. Uh, amazing. It's a wonder there isn't more, uh, more signs of their presence at the time. Okay, so we got as far as, uh, as the Muslims. So we can say at this point that uh, Spain is a superpower. By 1492, 1500, it was really growing. It became a superpower. Now, can you guess what made it a superpower? Trade. Slaves. Trade. Trade, right. Slaves. Slaves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Uh, it's uh, water, uh, water, the, the trading. Their, their location, that, that's, that's good, that's good. I'll give you some ideas. Uh, <clears throat> for instance, um, Ferdinand and Isabella ruled, and they were both young and very aggressive, and they wanted to make something of Spain. Uh, Spain had been divided, as we said before, and when Ferdinand and Isabella came, they united Aragon and Castile. And, and they're, they're the biggest provinces there. And they welded them together and they made a strong, so actually you could say that could be the beginning of Spain when Ferdinand and Isabel got married. By the way, uh, they were only 15 or 16 when they married, very, very young. But they, they grew up to be uh, uh, very good rulers. And of course they had the gold made them a superpower. Where did they get the gold from? <clears throat> Where did they get the gold from? In the Caribbean. In the Caribbean? Yeah. Where else? This is Spain now. It had sent out feelers all over. Mexico. Mexico. They raided Mexico. They South raided America. South America. Bizarro, remember? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, they were very, uh, they wanted to be progressive, and so that's why they took a chance with Columbus. And they said, well, maybe he makes sense, and there is another land, and if there is another land, we can get more gold and silver. So they're always feeling their way around to, uh, to enrich the empire of Spain. Uh, any questions? I'll gladly try to, I'd like to hear from you whenever possible. And of course, they had the support, which helped to build them up, the support of the Roman Catholic Church, <clears throat> which was the only church at the time, remember. There was no Protestant church in uh, 1492. So they had the backing of the Roman hierarchy and, and the church. All these things helped them to become a superpower, the strongest nation in the world. And of course, who wanted to knock them down? Who wanted to beat them? English. England, yes. And, and they, they fought tooth and nail for so long. And this gradually led to their uh, 
to their defeat. All right, so they become a superpower. And uh, let's see where we should go from here. It didn't last too long because decline started to set in about 50-50, 50-50. And decline always comes gradually, doesn't it? It's like an infection. It takes hold and then it takes time to to destroy the tissue or, or whatever it is. Now, what are some of the things that cause their decline? Well, first of all, as you hinted before, the defeat of the Spanish Armada in 1588, <clears throat> when the Spanish fought the English <clears throat> and uh, the English showed their superiority. Evidently, the, um, <clears throat> the Spanish thought they had it made, but somehow the wind changed and the English sent some burnt ships in there to destroy the uh, <clears throat> greater part of the Spanish Armada. 1588, they were also losing colonies. They were losing colonies, colonies they had gained in the Caribbean <clears throat> and in South America. This was the time of um, Colombia, what's his name? Who was the savior in Colombia? Bolivar. Boulevard. So they were starting to lose some of that land there too, and it came uh, very gradually. Anything you want to add or subtract? So she's a superpower, but she loses gradually ground as the years roll on. Of course, England is just waiting, waiting there in the stands, waiting to do their best to undo all the nations are. They figure, well, Spain is getting, <clears throat> is getting along so well and so rich, we should have a part of that um, uh, carcass as well. So at this point, 1588, 1600, we're going to jump to 1898. There are so many uh, exchanges of kings and queens in there, it's kind of hard to keep them all straight. So we're going to jump from 1588 to 1898. Well, does that strike anything in your mind? 1898, 1914, back to 1898, Spanish America War. Yeah. Spanish America War. And this is another case where Spain suffers and loses a lot of uh, prestige. What's this one about the expulsion of the Jews back then? Good question. Uh, they expelled the Jews. They either had to go or face consequences. And uh, they say that that was one of the worst things they could do. Can you imagine why? They had no land. They cut their own throats. Because why? They had no land to go to if they had they, thrown them out. <clears throat> but why, why was Spain cutting its own throat in a way? Weren't the uh, Jews the bankers of the world? That's right. That's right. Yeah, they were running Spain, helping to keep it operating successfully. So the ones they drove out, they were like drawing, losing some of their best blood. Mm -hmm. And that, I guess that's been true uh, throughout the ages. Uh, but they were expelled, and those are called the Sephardic Jews. Uh, that's their class. Mm -hmm. And I think some of them probably still return to Spain because they don't want to forget that, that heritage when they were driven out of Spain. All right, so in this case, in 1898, Spain owns Cuba and a lot of other islands. It owns all of South America, Guam and so many other distant places. And the little island that says, help us, help us, is none other than Cuba. They claimed that Spain was persecuting them and they wanted help. So help comes from Uncle Sam. You know anything about the Spanish-American War? Yeah, uh, was it San Juan? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt. That's right, yeah. you got it, you got it. 1898. Very important uh, time in their history. So we went to their aid, uh, and you remember it's the time of the blowing up of the main the main is in the harbor to take out all the American citizens. Mm -hmm. And somehow, in the middle of the night, it blows up. 
And to this day, we don't know what the real cause of it was. Did, did you read that too? Yeah, I remember that. They, you remember they, that? They, they thought it was like America blew it up so they could get into the war. Well, we don't know. Uh, there's yeah, all kinds no, of things. we don't know, but that was one of the theories. Yeah. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's a theory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not making sense, but it's yeah. a theory. Well, when you consider what a warmonger Teddy Roosevelt was, you couldn't believe it. No, he wasn't a warmonger. No. I don't think so. No. You don't think he liked to go to war? If he had to, he would go. He'd he would go. He did. Yeah. But that, he's not a warmonger. Well, I meant it in the sense that his rough riders were all too ready to penetrate. That's what, that's what soldiers are for, to yeah. be ready to go. Yeah, all right. Well, we have hawks and doves, don't that's we? That's right. Yeah, and I guess we always will. So I would rank him as a hawk rather than a dove. I would, I a would dove. too. Yeah. But not an aggressive hawk. No. He's a hawk when he's get attacked, or he doesn't like... Different uh, kinds of hawks and doves, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Very good. That, that's, uh, did you want to say anything? Uh, no, no, no problem. No, no. Okay. So Cuba gets the help that it needs. And of course, in the Philippines, uh, Dewey is on guard. And he goes right into Manila and takes Manila in, in just a few days. So Spain is losing more and more ground. The islands, some of the places in South America, and as you say, Teddy Roosevelt just itching to get into the war. He could hardly wait to get his Rough Riders together and run up San Juan Hill as he, as he bravely did. He was quite a guy, wasn't he? Yeah. Teddy, you know anything else about Teddy? He wanted to put all the land, his uh, environmental. Mm -hmm. Established a lot of federal parks. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, what's this thing about Florida's Dewey? What's that? I, oh, I what is that again, please? Number two, Flor is it Florida? Dewey? Uh, and this is Philippines? Dewey in the Philippines. Who's yeah. that? Well, Admiral Dewey uh, oh, took Admiral. over the Philippines. Okay. He took over the Philippines. And so they lost the ground there. Um, and of course, the Spanish-American War is interesting because uh, it didn't settle very much. We won the Philippines from the Spanish, but the Philippines didn't want to be owned by anybody. So lo and behold, they start another war. Instead of a Spanish-American, it's, it's a second phase of it. It lasted four years. The Spanish-American War lasted only a few months. But the war that ensued when, when the Philippines were not happy with America lasted four years. And our men fought there for four years uh, trying to make something out of the Philippines. We regarded them as uh, almost as slaves, uh, the little black uh, natives uh, we looked upon them as. So uh, it took, it wasn't until 1946, I believe, that the Philippines finally got their independence. They had been trying all the time, but it took them so long to gain that independence they want. So just try to remember, following the uh, Spanish-American War, we have four years of another war uh, with the Philippines and the U.S., good old USA. All right, any questions before we leap on? <clears throat> but it's losing ground, as you can see, little by little. From the superpower that it was, and it's kind of a lesson to everybody, isn't it? You can be a superpower, but it doesn't long take long to lose a lot of that power if you don't use it wisely. And I think that's our challenge today, isn't it? Yeah. To know what to do with our power and where, where to use it. Uh, it's a responsibility, and it's a big one when you're a, a superpower. So finally, we jump to 1936, not too far from 1898 to 36. This is the rule of Franco. He and the fascists and the Nazis uh, group together because they want to uh, form their own form of fascism in Spain. <clears throat> and he rules until 76. And the two parties are the nationalists or the fascists 
and the Republicans. And this is a war when many Americans felt uh, kind of sorry for uh, Spain and went over there to battle and sided with the Republicans. Uh, in 76, a democracy returned. There are changes, uh, here are some of them. There's political changes, political freedom is allowed. There's an open door policy. Uh, uh, they, they began to let in people from other countries. Uh, females were uh, becoming more important. And finally, after much struggling, they formed a uh, constitutional monarchy. And to this day, they have uh, a king and a queen, King Juan Carlos and Princess Sophia, a constitutional monarchy. But what a, what a history, uh, all the way from the Celts and the Visigoths to the Romans, the Arabs. And it's interesting, too, uh, about the Arabs. I've been reading about the Balkans and how Oh, they were there about 500 years. The Arabs ruled. They, they played a big part in, in this older history. And uh, I think a lot of them would like to see that, that era return. But it doesn't look that way. And, uh, but still, there was a time when, when they were very, very prominent. Uh, they were uh, uh, foremost in science, in medicine, astrology. Uh, some of our, our smartest uh, uh, theologians and whatnot come from the Arab tradition. Any comments on that? Mm -hmm. When you consider they ruled from 732 to 1492, it's a wonder they didn't take over more than they did. Mm -hmm. And do you know what the second biggest religion is nowadays? Muslim. Muslim. First is Christianity, and then the Muslims. What do you think about them in our country? They have rights just as like everybody else, but they use it differently. They what? They use it differently. Yeah, yeah, they're different. But so, so are all the other uh, minorities, so to speak. They're different. And uh, I don't know. We're talking about the Muslims and mm -hmm. their place in Spanish history. And today, uh, uh, I don't know. It takes us time to get used to different people, doesn't it? Sure. It takes time. The the Muslims had such control of Spain. Where did uh, Ferdinand and Isabella come from? Where, where did that monarchy start? Uh, well, one was, uh, she was Queen of Castile, and he was King of Aragon. And so they merged to form the Spanish Empire. Okay, those are two separate. The, yeah, they're separate. Uh, I, I had a map, but... Uh, the, yeah, but it won't help them very much. Uh, but that, that's what uh, started the beginning of their super power, that welding of the two big chunks uh, getting together. Uh, very, you said there was like four regions. One was Grenada? Uh, Navarre, uh, uh, Castile, yeah. Aragon, and Leon. So who ran the other two if these two were there and there? Well, they, they, were, they were part of the four, big four, okay. Aragon and Castile. But they didn't have like a king or a queen up there? Or a... In the other parts, well, they had their leaders, yeah. yeah. yeah those four chunks had their kings. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually uh, how they formed the states very often. A, a king would <clears throat> become all powerful and then the people would gravitate around him for, for protection. Mm -hmm. And this is the way the states were gradually formed. That's what happened in the Balkans, which were crisscrossed by uh, almost twice as many invaders as this. But in time, the, they, they grew into little states, as you know, Bosnia, Serbia, Croatia. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a very interesting story, too. Uh, the French came in here 
somewhere. The French? Uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. There's, I th there's a French influence in the Caribbean. That mm-hmm. That's true. They wanted to get a piece of the cake, didn't they? They certainly did. And England did. And they finally saw the demise of Spain. They saw her downfall gradually. And then as soon as Spain vacated, in jumps the English <clears throat> to become the new, new, new superpower. I'm sorry, did you get the wrong time? Uh, no, I was just late. I overslept. Oh, oh, oh. Well, we forgive you. Thank you. So if you can picture it as a, as a land that was crisscrossed by so many elements and gradually forming what they call the Spanish language, that's another interesting story. Pardon? Come in. Well, they're on the, on the uh, western strip, you know. Uh, you could see um, Spain as a big block. They call it a peninsula sticking out. I wish we had maps here. We don't. So it's like a big block. And on the western strip is Portugal. And uh, I'm, I want to get a book and study a little bit more about Portugal. But somehow Portugal had her day before before um, uh, they had their day, uh, Portugal used to rule the seas and be number one, but they lost the power to the, to the Spanish. But it's a strip, if this is a big box for Spain, take about a fifth of that on the Atlantic edge, that's Portugal. And of course, uh, uh, everything weaves together here, the history, like the, the Italians, when they got the the traveling bug, uh, Amerigo, Vespucci, Columbus, they went from Italy to Spain <clears throat> because they knew that Spain was willing to take a chance on their ventures overseas. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is what brought uh, Christopher Columbus there. And he started his four voyages and uh, did the things that he did. You know about Ves Vespucci, don't you? Miracle, Vespucci? Yeah, I remember. I just can't place it now. I remember the name. And okay. What does the what does the name click in your mind? Amerigo, America. America. That's right. We don't call our, ourselves Columbusians. Mm -hmm. We call ourselves Americans, and that's a beautiful story <clears throat> of how he got to be in the place of Columbus. Uh, I don't know if we want to go into that, but. Uh, Everybody knows about Columbus from here to... Pardon? Everybody knows about Columbus from yeah, here to... Yeah, uh, but not about Amerigo. No, yeah. no. He had a good PR man. <laughs> yeah, Columbus did very well, but he made a, <clears throat> a few mistakes, and uh, the king got a little mad with him and uh, said, I'm going to strip you of your titles. This was at the first voyage. You see, the first... He, four times he came into the Caribbean never touched America, but nevertheless, uh, we claim that he discovered America. Uh, so he came and uh, uh, made the crossing, made certain advances, but the king still wasn't happy. So he says, I'm going to take away that privilege that you have of crossing, making the crossings, and I'm going to give it to anybody that will take it. And lo and behold, the king comes up with 11 ships to carry on Columbus's work. And one of the ships is, is uh, headed by Amerigo Vespucci. And that, that's quite a tale, hmm. how he becomes uh, more and more prominent <clears throat> and people begin to think a lot of him. And before you know it, when they make the first map of America, of the world, whose name do they put on it? Not Columbus. America. America. America Vespucci, about uh, oh, 1,500, you yeah. it's, it's a beautiful story. Uh, and of course, Marigold gets on the ship and tries to do the same thing that Columbus did. 
He takes on four voyages, but goes into the same area, the Caribbean, sneaks down to South America a little bit, but uh, doesn't really find much that Columbus hadn't touched already. <clears throat> but a lot of people don't realize that uh, <clears throat> he never t touched the continent, the, uh, our continent. He went here and there, went back, tried again down to South America, the Orinoco, but never, never touched. Uh, and yet he thought <clears throat> he had reached the, uh, uh, the East Indies. He thought he had reached his destination, but he never did. Anything else I can help you with or share with you? Columbus had, had his uh, vacation day for everybody in America. Uh, mm. <laughs> he got the he got the credit. Yeah, he he, he still does because yeah. because if if you ask <clears throat> most people who was Amerigo Vespucci, I know who's that. I remember the name, but I couldn't tell you what he did. Yeah. Well, I hope I helped a little bit yeah. to get it straightened out. Um, and then you got to fight the uh, Norwegians for Leif Erikson, and yeah. supposedly they were here first. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing how the people of the world have moved around, isn't it? Searching for a better pasture, or a mm -hmm. greener, yeah. greener this or that. But that's what made the world, and especially in Europe, where they. Crisscross continued. We're lucky here. We just had the Indians, right, as predecessors. Mm -hmm. Just the Indians, not not Vikings and Goths and mm -hmm. Celtics, but just just the good old American Indian. Yep. Well, that's all I wanted to say, just to give you a little broad picture of what the Spanish history is about, the way it progressed how they gained their power and then lost it gradually, but showing how even the greatest powers can disintegrate. And it's a little scary because uh, uh, let's remember there's always other, as we know so well, other countries that are waiting to get into the top of the hill. So you would just call Spain just a country, nothing superpower now. They have no real authority over no, I think they're part of the Union, yeah. the European Union, but uh, I think he's a king just like a few other mm -hmm. kings. Uh, and they've had to modernize. And I think they're facing the same problems we do. Mm -hmm. Immigration, integration, uh, much the same. By the way, I'm not a professor. I, I just like history, and I like to uh, rap about it. Uh, but it's, it's beautiful because the more you read, the more you, you realize how little we know, <laughs> you know. Because we go to school, we get to high school, and then we just kind of drop it all yeah. and figure that, well, we got to make a living, so what's the sense of learning this and uh, this and that? Anything you wanted to say? I, I was just interested about the Portuguese because... Um, Are you Portuguese? Well, I thought I was. <laughs> you thought you were? Oh. My brother had his DNA done, and uh, we're 16% Spanish. Oh. So that w that's why I was wondering how the Portuguese got into the mm -hmm. Spanish thing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there was a lot of interplay between the two countries, because the borders might be... Uh, Especially with the Portuguese were sailors, too. <laughs> yes, yes, they were. They were among the best. By the way, uh, another famous uh, sailing group was the Basques up in northern Spain. They occupy just a little strip up there, but they're a, an ancient, very, very interesting people that you might want to read about. B-A-S-Q-U-E-S. They Basque. want their independence now. Pardon? The Basque want their independence. Well, they're fighting now for they, 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 Legally? They're trying to get it? Is that it? Not, not, well, a little terrorist activity, but they, yeah, they, they would love to be separated from the rest of the... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was reading or hearing where uh, Serbia is having trouble again. Uh, Serbia's been a hot spot in the, uh, in the Balkans 
And just on TV the other night, how they're crying for their independence to... Um, you went to Spain, did you? Yes. Oh, you did. What else did you see there? Well, I just traveling through the country. Mm-hmm. So, saw a lot of all, olive trees. <laughs> olive Greece, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything outstanding that you feel? No, no. I, it was, it, it's a pretty country. The the, the cities, uh, they were, you know, they're old cities that <clears throat> mm -hmm. are very interesting. How about the architecture? Were you struck by that at all? The architecture down down in uh, Barcelona, mm. Gaudi, was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish we had gone there. I got to parts of Europe, but <clears throat> never got to Spain. Uh, well, maybe someday, huh? Maybe. <laughs> Are the Spanish people as welcoming and warm as the Italians? Um, I'd say the Italians were yeah. a little bit more. The what did you say? The, the Italians uh, it seemed to welcome you a little bit more than the Spanish. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I loved Italy. Oh, my. Italy, is, Italy is very interesting. Oh, my. Right. You, you could spend a lot of time in Rome. Yeah, in Rome, yes, yes. Yeah, no wonder they call it the Eternal City, huh? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just filled with all kinds of history. Oh, you know? it's a lot, yeah, a lot of it is still standing. The, the, yeah. the Romans were marvelous people. Yeah. yeah, the aqueducts. The aqueducts, the yeah. roads, the, the road. buildings. Some of their buildings are still, yeah. still standing three three thousand years later. It's amazing, huh? Oh, it's a, it's very amazing. Very. Um, what really impressed me was their cleanliness as compared to the Europeans, you know, many years later, the Europeans, for, because uh, they, they didn't believe in cleanliness. Well, they once, oh, here again, they once ruled the world like the Spanish, uh, practically, and, and look at the way Rome fell. And Rome fell the same way as some of these were formed. It was the incoming, the influx of the tribes, the Germanic tribes, the Frankish tribes that were looking for a better place to live. And they gnawed and gnawed at the, at the Roman borders. They just kept biting and gnawing and finally in, in 450 roughly uh, Rome fell. And uh, it split. It split with a capital in Rome and they also established a capital in uh, Constantinople. Constantinople. And who was the guy who went to Constantinople? Who was the leader? Mark Anthony. No, no. Constantinople. Constantine. 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 Mark Anthony, that's, that's where he fled, though, to, to uh, Constantinople when, when he. Who was that? When, Mark Anthony, when he oh, fell did out he? of favor from uh, Caesar. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. So he did the same thing that Constantine did, yeah. And that's important because that, that's, those two moves, the, the Roman church remained, but uh, because of uh, Constantine going over to Istanbul or Constantinople, uh, maybe a thousand miles away, it was the beginning of the division of the Roman church because the Roman church gradually rejuvenated, but... Constantine formed another aspect of Catholicism, and that's orthodoxy, Greek orthodoxy. See that part of the world? Instead of Latin, the ruling element was Greek, and uh, uh, everything was Greek instead of Latin, and uh, it, it, it just became uh, uh, almost, uh, un it was another form of, of Catholicism, which ushered in the uh, birth of the Greek Orthodox Church and the Russian Orthodox Church who don't agree with the Roman Catholics. You see, one is Roman and the other is what we call Byzantine. That whole area there, Istanbul in that area, is, is the Byzantine Empire. 
That's good. I'm glad to, glad to hear that. Uh, I wonder what Istanbul looks like. I have never been. As far as I got to, was to Ephesus. Ep Ep Ephesus? Oh, Ephesus. Right oh, okay. Ephesus, yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, that's mentioned in the Bible. One of the... Mary was supposed to flee to Ephesus. Mm hmm Yeah, that's where Paul wrote one of his letters, and he used to write to Thessalonica and Ephesus and Galatia. And these places are still existing today that St. Paul wrote to 2,000 years ago. You know, amazing. We still have those letters that he wrote uh, way back then for the Bible. Well, if there's no other questions, we'll... Anything else that we can help you with? I'm sorry you missed the... You have the outline there. Yeah, I got one. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming. And uh, helping out in the discussion.